Good morning and welcome to McClure's Sunday, July 25th Zoom service during the church season of Pentecost. We would like to offer our thanks to all those who've had a part in preparing today's services. Our heartfelt thanks once again go out to Joanne and Larry Morrison for the time, effort and expertise they continue to offer in ensuring that we are able to offer this online service this summer. Our church service is now open to everyone who would like to attend Sunday services at 10.30 on Sunday morning. Keep in touch with the church through Reverend Jim's Messenger and take some time to look at our YouTube channel. Today we offer our prayers to those facing fire, flood, famine, and fear here and throughout the world. We also offer our prayers of thankfulness for our families, our friends, our fellowship, our fun, our festivities, even our faith that we so readily are able to enjoy now. God is present in every moment of our lives. Help us notice, and we hope that this morning's service will be a very positive and meaningful worship experience for you. Please join me in the call to worship. In a summertime world, look and see. Sunlight dancing on the waters and shimmering in waves above endless sand beaches. Wild, Wild roses, roses splashed in glorious color beside the roads and butterflies flitting across the gardens God has created. In a summertime world, stop and listen. Birds proclaim the early morning light the breeze whispers through the trees, and children laugh in sheer delight for the freedom of summer. In a summertime world, taste and know the unutterable delight of a dripping, melting popsicle shared with a friend. The tart, sweet magic of raspberries warmed by the sun and freshly picked, and the blessing of watermelon cut, sliced, and served at a family picnic. It is sacred. Hallelujah. Let us worship our Creator. Let us pray. In moments of quiet reflection and in moments of animated conversation, in this time of celebration and in our times of uncertainty and worry, in our sleeping and in our waking, your way, O God, merges with our path. Lead us past the limits of our minds and bodies into the now of faith and life. Wrestle with us as we seek a greater wisdom in which we rise and journey with you. Amen.
The first reading is from Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The second reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34 and 53 to 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gensere and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Here I am. 
Today's theme conversation is about giving. I want to tell you about Paul, who wrote lots of letters to the early Christian churches. In one of his letters to the Corinthians, he told about a church that was doing a great job. They had had a really hard time and just a tiny, tiny bit of money. But even with that tiny bit of money, they gave generously. Paul wrote, they gave themselves to God first And then they gave themselves to the people. Paul says they gave completely. Wow. Most of the time when we think of giving, we think of money or buying a present. So if you don't have a ton of money, let's talk about giving yourself. Giving what you have right now. Here's a bag that contains some items that might help us. I will pull something out of my bag and then explain how we can give generously with these items. Here's a measuring cup. It can represent many things. It might mean kids helping prepare dinner for your family or washing the dishes joyfully. As an adult, it might mean inviting someone over for tea or sharing your garden produce with a neighbor. If you think you could give in that way, then do it. Now here is a toy. You could give by donating the toys that you have outgrown or don't use anymore to someone younger, or find new items for someone who doesn't have many toys or possessions. As an adult, it might mean donating items of clothing, furniture, books to someone in need. Thumbs up if you could give in that way. This is a watch. It represents giving your time. As a kid, you could invite a friend for a play date or include someone in your game. As an adult, you could visit someone who is ill or make a phone call to someone who is housebound or volunteer at a food bank or be a big sister or brother to a child. Can you give your time? Thanks for giving your time. Final item in my bag is a set of markers. Maybe you have some talents you can give or share with others. You might be able to color or draw great pictures or sing. Or maybe you give great big bear hugs. Or maybe you can share your talent with your grandchild. Or you can offer your services as a fix-it person or share your organizational skills with your church and community. There is something that kids can do well, sometimes better than adults. Do you know what that might be? I think kids are very good at having fun. They know how to laugh and they know what makes them happy. One little girl I know loves to draw and paint. She's very young, but she has found something that gives her joy. She sends her art to people who are sick, and I'm sure those lovely pictures make them feel better. And she makes her family and friends feel loved by sharing her gifts of art. I know a boy who has chosen not to have his friends bring him birthday presents, but rather encourages them to donate to a charity. The Bible tells us, for if the readiness is there, the gift is acceptable. This first means that if you are eager and excited about what you do and share your talent with others, your gift will be pleasing and helpful and a blessing. Find what it is you love to do and then do it with eagerness and joy. When you do something that you love to do, you are a blessing to yourself, to others, and to God. Celebrate each day and have fun. Our kids can teach us how. 
Let's hear about the things that make you feel like you want to sing or dance or shout and give. You know what I mean? Those activities that make you feel good. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you ourselves. We give you our time, our possessions, our talents. Use us to help and love others. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. What wonderful images the scriptures present in the story of Jesus feeding the thousands of people who gathered. The gospel lessons tell us that with a small offering of five barley loaves and two fish, he offered sustenance to the many. We wonder about this and have our doubts that such a thing could really happen in today's world. We see the big picture the thousands of dollars that are spent on trivial things. But we do not hear about the small wonders that are performed everywhere in your name as good people reach out to those in need. Take away our blindness and our doubt. Surround us with a strong faith that when we hear the words of healing, we may confidently know that you are in the midst of all our lives. Heal our wounded spirits. Restore in us a spirit of joy as we have lifted names of our dear ones in our prayers before you, O God, we ask your healing blessing on each of their lives and situations. We also ask your healing mercies on all areas in which there is strife, oppression, and despair. Comfort your people with your love. Empower your disciples to serve you fully in your world. We ask this in Jesus' name and pray in the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
May the love that brought you into being fill you with hope. May the peace that passes understanding be on you. May the joy that loves where justice is alive be in you.